Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at a capacitor in a circuit, a very, very simple circuit. As we have drawn here before, we're going to attach a capacitor to the two terminals of a battery, which means that we're putting a potential difference across the terminals of the capacitor, which then causes charge to be pushed onto the capacitor by the battery. The capacitance, of course, is defined as the amount of charge that gets placed onto the capacitor divided by the voltage applied to the capacitor or across the terminals of the capacitor. So here we have a, a little bit more of an illustrative picture of this particular situation. We have a battery with a positive and negative terminal. It is connected to a capacitor, and so the battery will push charges onto the capacitor plate. Now, before this process starts, we have placed a switch in there, and when we open the switch, no charges can, can get pushed onto the capacitor plate because there's no path for them to follow. And let's assume that we start with capacitor plates that have no charge on them whatsoever. There's no charges on the, on the plates. The battery is connected, but the switch is open, so no charge can flow. At time equals zero, that's what this means, we close the switch. Now the battery will begin to push charges onto the capacitor plate. First, it puts one charge on it, the second charge, the third charge, and initially, as there are very few charges onto the plates, the charges will distribute themselves as far away from one another as possible because they repel each other on this plate. So initially, it's not a big problem for the battery because the charges are far apart, there's not a lot of repulsive forces, and so the battery continues to push charges onto the plate. But as more and more charge piles onto the plate, the repulsive forces between the charges continues to increase and increase, and that repulsive force begins to push back against the battery, trying to slow down. So the, the essence, in essence, the result of that is that the force of the repulsive forces pushing back will begin to slow down the current flow into the, uh, onto the capacitor plate. In other words, the charges being pushed onto the capacitor plate. Again, as the battery continues to put more and more charge on there, the repulsive force becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, and eventually the repulsive forces will be as strong as the force by which the battery pushes charge onto the plate. When those two forces become equal, there's no more charge that will be placed onto the plate, and the capacitor will now be full. If you now put a bigger battery there with a greater voltage difference, a greater potential difference between the terminals, then again you can push with a greater force and more charge can then pile onto the capacitor. But for a given battery, for a given voltage supply, when the limit is reached, when the capacitor is fully charged as we call it, when the maximum charge is being placed on the capacitor, the charges will stop flowing and no more charge can be placed onto the capacitor. If we now draw a picture of that, a graphic of that, you can see that when the, when the switch first closes, charges begin to pile onto the capacitor and the amount of charge, which is indicated by the vertical axis, Q, the amount of charge that builds onto the capacitor, increases initially rapidly, but then as more and more charge piles up, the, the increase will slow down, slow down, slow down, and eventually it just kind of trickles in until it stops in all intents and purposes when the maximum charge has been placed onto the capacitor plates. So this is how a capacitor acts inside the circuit when it's connected to a voltage supply, the voltage supply will push charges onto the capacitor, the charges will begin to repel, the more charges, the greater pulsive force, and eventually the whole process comes to halt when the capacitor is fully charged. And so Q is the maximum charge placed on the capacitor when a certain potential difference, a certain voltage is applied to the capacitor. And that ratio defines the capacitance of that capacitor. Now think about it. If we make the capacitor twice as big, you'll be able to load twice as much charge for a particular amount of voltage applied to the capacitor. Or, if you apply twice as much voltage, you'll be able to put twice as much charge onto the capacitor. And now I think we have a pretty good understanding of what a capacitor is and what capacitance is. And here it is.